A lot of applications nowadays are working offline first, like progressive web applications. And there is quite a difficult task inside to implement background syncing of the data, so all your requests offline and online are going smoothly. This is why by the end of this video you will learn how to implement correctly exactly that functionality. And here I have a to-do application where we can create to-dos, which will create them in the database, then we can remove them or toggle. And actually this application is already partially is progressive web application because I installed here service workers. I can click here offline and reload the page, and as you can see our page is still rendered. But the main problem is all data are not there, and even when we are making some changes, nothing happens. So the only thing that is cached in service workers are just JavaScript, HTML and CSS. We can see it here in cache storage, here is our cache, and we have here the list of our files. So let's look on the service worker, we are caching everything except of our API calls. This is why here we are checking that localhost 3004, this is my API, is excluded, it does not cache these requests. So how to implement now working with data offline? First of all, we must go to helpers, and this is fetching of our to-dos. The first thing that we want to do is save our data that we fetch to local storage. So local storage set item, here our key, for example, cached to-dos, and our value will be a stringified array to-dos. Additionally, when we are offline, we want to respond with this data from local storage. So if our navigator.online is false, then here we want to parse our to-dos. So we are calling JSON parse on our local storage get item, which is cached to-dos. And if for some reason it is null, we want to fall back to an empty array. As this function must return a promise, we can return here promise.resolve and pass inside an array of to-dos. Now, while online, I want to reload the page, so we set local storage. Now I am clicking offline here and reload the page again. And as you can see, we are offline, but we are loading this data, because inside local storage, our cache to-dos are stored here. Our next step is to update our local storage when we are adding or removing a to-do. This is why inside our add to-do, we want to get access to the cached to-dos from local storage. And again, we can just copy paste this line from the top, because this is the same. And now we want to update this cache to do's array with new to do. So I am pushing here new to do that we created. And now we just need to update our local storage. So local storage set item. And here we are stringifying our cached to do's array. Which means every time when we are creating a to do, we are updating this information. And exactly the same we need to implement inside remove to do function. So here I will copy paste these three lines, so we are reading cache to do's, but here instead of push we want to remove an item, so let's name it updated to do's, and on our cache to do's we are doing filter, we are getting access to the to do and checking that id should not equal the to do id that we are removing. This is our updated to do's that we are writing inside local storage. And let's copy paste it again to our toggle to do function. So let's paste it here. First of all, we are reading our cache to do's. Now we want to prepare our updated to do's. And in order to do that, we need to update one item in our array. For this, we can use map, get access to the to do, and check that to do id equals the to do id that we want to update. If it equals, then we want to return here an updated to do. In our case, we are just returning a to do. This will update our array with data, and now we are just storing it in local storage. Let's reload the page and try to create an item, for example, foo. I am hitting here enter, let's check local storage. Here is our record foo with this completed false. This means that when we are going offline and reload the page, we can create new records. We have here our foo, I am writing here bar, hitting enter. And as you can see that in the local storage, we have a bar, so it was saved, but we don't see it rendered. And it is happening because here we have uncaught fetch error. So our next step here would be to catch all errors when we are offline, and additionally, every single time when we are catching an error, we want to add this request to the queue. How can we implement that? First of all, here I want to create a new function, which will be enqueue task. And it will be just an object. 
What we want to get here is our queue that we already have. And the queue is just an array of objects in local storage. This is why here JSON parse and local storage get item. And let's name it, for example, task queue. If it is null, then we're fall back into an empty array. Now we want to add a new task to the queue with push. And we need to update our local storage. So local storage set item, again, task queue. And here we're JSON stringifying our queue that we updated. So what this function does, it simply updates an array in the local storage. And now we can use this function in every single place, which changes data through the API. For example, here we have add to do, this is fetch with then. Now here I want to create catch. Here we don't care about an error, but what we want to do is call an queue task and provide inside an object. And we must provide here four different fields. First of all, it will be a URL. This is what we want to fetch. We're adding this URL inside. After this is a method, which will be post. Our action will be add to do. The action we need just to understand what are we talking about. This is our function add to do. And the last one is body. It will be our new to do that we are providing inside. This is this body here. And exactly the same I need to do in the remove to do. But here the URL will be different. It will have a to do ID. It is a delete. The action is remove to do. And our body will be null. And now exactly the same with toggle to do. Here we are making not delete but put request. It is toggle to do. And our body will be updated to do. And as you can see, we are not returning anything inside catch, and this is a problem. When we successfully create a to do, we return it back. Now we need to return it also inside catch. So here we can return new to do. Inside remove, we can return an object with to do ID. And in the toggle to do, we can return our updated to do. Now let's try again. I am offline and I'm trying to create a bar to do. As you can see, it appeared on the bottom, but we are offline. Now inside console, we don't have an error because we cached it. And now inside our local storage, you can see not only cache to do's, but our task queue. So what is task queue? This is an array of queued tasks. These are API calls that we must do later. Here we are storing a URL, method, our body and an action, which it was done for. And now our application can fully function offline, like for example, removing bar, but it is not syncing data when we're coming online. This is why the last piece of code is to process all our enqueued tasks. So let's create a function, process task queue, and this is an asynchronous function. So first of all, here we need to get our queue from the local storage. We already did that, so we can take this JSON parse. After this, I can use a while loop to do it while queue length is bigger than zero. And here we are trying to get our first task, which will be queue zero. Now we want to write a try catch, and if we are getting an error, we want to break. And inside our try, we want to make a fetch call with our task.url, and then here is an object. First of all, our method will be task.method, then headers, must be content type, application JSON. And the last one will be our body. If we have task body, we want to stringify it. So it will be JSON stringify task body. In other case, we're passing here now. And after we made this API call, we need to take the task from the queue. So we can use here queue shift. And we need to do set item again. This is why I will copy paste the line with set item task queue and stringify our updated queue. Now the only thing that we need to do is to call this function. So when our application loaded, we want to check if our navigator.online is true. We want to call this task from helpers. So it is helpers process task queue, which essentially means if later we're reloading the page and we're online, we're going through this queue. If it is empty, we're not doing anything. If we were offline and have a queue, we process it. Additionally to this, we need a listener. On the window, we have a listener, which is called online. And when we are coming online, we want again to call this function. So helpers process task queue. So when we are offline, we are collecting a queue. Then we are coming online and we are doing all the CPI calls in a correct sequence. So I am offline now. Let's change something in our application. I want to remove AA, CC, and then maybe create BB. 
Inside local storage you can see in task queue we made three requests. Delete, delete and post. Now I want to come online, so I am clicking on offline checkbox and let's look in network. And this is what happened. We called the API three times. First of all was a delete, then one more delete and then a post. This is why when we are reloading the page you can see that all this data are coming from the backend and BB is there. So this is how you are implementing progressive web application with background sync. And if you want to prepare for JavaScript interview to get a dream job or to change your job and get more money, I prepared for you a free PDF that you can download in the description box below with a lot of real questions.